Hey guys, it's Monday night. I'm Molly Sanyor. It's Throne of Molly. It's episode 30. No, 40? 40. Oh my gosh, it's episode 40, Throne of Molly, Monday night, 7 p.m. And I'm so excited. Let's get them out. It's Blair Colimo, aka ABC Pottery. Come on out, Blair. Hey. So excited to have him as my guest tonight, guys. Girls. Hey, everyone. Cheers. We like oh, to cheers. cheers. Yeah. Thank you so much Cheers, for coming. Thanks for inviting me. Guys, Blair was just on the cover of Ceramics Monthly. I can't wait to talk all about that. He teaches. I was I was going to post you teach ceramics at VCU, but sure. I Googled you and it didn't say that. It said well, crafts. I teach craft and material studies. Mostly, uh, I run the, the clay program, mm -hmm. um, but I teach all across the department of craft and material studies. So fiber, glass, metal, wood, and clay. Yeah. And you were on the cover of Ceramics Monthly. Sure. <laughs> he's on the cover of Ceramics Monthly. Anybody who's a potter, that's like, I feel like that's the mile. Like, you want to be on the cover of Ceramics Monthly. Had you been on the cover before? Not on the cover. No. I feel like Not on the a, cover. It was on the like a, a bigger goal a while ago than it was recently. Re you know, I get kind of like, there's so many other things that are pressing, you know, like from exhibitions and other things that... I think at one time I was like, I really want to do that. And then I was like, oh, it kind of just happened. happened. You, know? so, yeah. you, were, just you arrived. Happen. You arrived. Yeah, it was kind of happen. So guys, I'm so excited to have Blair tonight. He is just going to throw whatever he feels like. Never I'm going to throw it. some colored clay. I think berry bowls these will be. It's like berry bowl season. We can always use a berry bowl. And I've weighed my clay out. To, I'm just using three pounds to hopefully have them kind of the same size. And I'll add in some colored clay as I throw so, what are you feeling? I don't know. And hopefully it's not too stiff. It feels stiff. good. That's a little stiff. Good. This is really soft. Um, I've been making kind of a lot of bottle forms lately. Um, so I think I'll probably start there. Yes. Yeah, if that's all right. So do you use a torch for your bottle form? I do sometimes. Okay, it yeah. all depends uh, sort of how wet the clay is and then... Okay. Um, you know, it just depends if I'm doing something kind of complex and I have like harsh curves. Pretty quick curves. I'll blast it with a, a torch for a little bit. Okay, well, let me know. I try I to kind one. of avoid it if I can. Right. So we had had some questions about torches, and oh. our students love a torch, and I love a torch. Like torches yeah. are fun. Torches are fire. Great. Right. You don't want yeah. torch, but sometimes the torch can be a toy with some students. Yeah. So it needs to, needs to be a, a tool, not a toy, as I tell them. So why would you not use a torch? Just to oh, any of those that's a good question. So I watching. think um, there's a couple drawbacks, I think, to the torch. Um, and one of them is that uh, um, it kind of tends to give me a little bit of a false sense of dryness, you know? Like, so yes. you blast it and the surface is dry and you're like, oh, it's super dry. Yes. And then you start throwing it, it's mushy, you know? So yes. I think it, it t it's a tool, right? And tools take skill to use. So, you know, um, that's one of the reasons. And, the other would just be that, um, I don't know, like especially on like handles or spouts or things that are a little bit more, uh, have more surface area or they're thinner or something, the torch can just do way too much yes, work Yes, and too take fast, them from much to know, dry. So. I, think, I just crappy. think patience is the best policy. Patience when you can be is. patient, you know. Like, clay teaches I mean, patience. And that's one of the things about being a, a studio artist in clay is that like the the clay tells you what your schedule is. You know, you don't get to kind of push it around in terms of. Um, I'm gonna turn the music down. Yeah, outside. sure. In terms of, uh, you know, when it's dry and it's ready to go, then you're working. You know, and that's it. And when it's not ready to go, you can't work. You know, and that's one of the, one of the things that clay teaches. You know, I always like have students that have, you know, are learning time management skills. Yes. And, you know, sometimes they're like, I wish we had a class that taught time management. And it's like, yeah, it's called ceramics. <laughs> You know, like, this is what it does, you know, because it's one of those things you have to be very responsive, you know, to the class. I have so many questions, but talking about time management, and so Blair teaches the college level, I teach high school level. What is your attendance policy as far as, like, if the class starts at three, yeah. and if they get there, what is your attendance policy? Do you have well, one? Um, yeah, of course. We have a department attendance policy, which is tied to their grade, of course. Um, but my attendance policy is kind of one where um, uh, as long as, you know, I don't mind if students, you know, sometimes students pop in a few minutes late. Again, you know, most of the craft media, you're wrapping something up in another studio, and that's okay. cool, you know, but um, I think it's, it, you know, I like things to start on time. 
uh, I'm typically on time, so uh, I try to encourage that to happen. Um, yes. And I, I usually don't crack down unless I have to, you know what I mean? And I forgot. What's it like in high school? I mean, in high school, they... There's like bells and stuff, right? I No, we actually no, don't have bells. a bell. We well, used nice. to, and now they don't. It's oh. kind of nice, but these kids are like... Taking their time, and I'm like, guys, you are totally tardy. It's my, it's yeah. my phrase. I call them totally tardy. I was totally tardy. Totally tardy, and I tell them be on time. And if you're, you know, it's just rude because the rest of us are waiting, and you stopped and got a snack. We all exactly. want a snack. Yeah. You know, we all want a snack, but we didn't stop. Yeah, at the college level, it's a little bit more like your your time is your own, and. When I organize sort of an assignment and sort of think about how much time it'll take, I think about in-class time, out-of-class time, what your other research or reading or whatever else is. And like, if you want to take 15 minutes out of your class time and go get a donut and a coffee, right down your, the street and yes, you shop, yes. you know, it's like, that's fine, but you owe me that work, you know? Yes. So I think a lot about that. I'm going to add another um, ball of clay here. I want to make a little bit bigger form. Um, and so I, I centered what I'm kind of comfortable with, but I just took a rib and uh, kind of dried off this surface and made it nice and flat. Um, and so I'm going to do the same here. I'm just going to kind of paddle this into a round ball, make sure it's nice and kind of dry and there's no folds or finger marks in it. And then I'm just going to put that right on top and center it right down into that ball of clay. And that'll just give me a larger ball of clay yes. to work with. Lots of questions about throwing bigger, so to throw bigger you That's have to have more technique. clay. one technique, yeah, it's one technique. And what's nice about it is you kind of bite off as much as you can choose. So I might center like this bottom part, which is comfortable for my hands, add another ball of clay, and then center that in. And so that's, you know, you're just kind of taking it section by section. And I could even uh, sort of extend that to, if I had a large lump of clay that was several balls of clay, I could open a little bit, and then open a little bit further, open a little bit further, all the way down. So you can bite off the process, throwing process in segments too. So it's just a. We already mentioned how we're gonna have a Blair and Blair showdown. I gotta oh, get Blair yeah. back. We'll have this Blair and my Blair. Yeah. So That's I'm already fun. excited. Maybe you can do that process then or something. Battle of that the sounds Blairs. awesome. Like Battle that. of the Blairs. This is so exciting. So guys, I don't. How many of you watch or get Ceramics Monthly or check it out? Because I just can't let that part go yet. If you haven't seen it, it like he's on the cover. And I, what I love about Blair's art is it's so recognizable. That's at least that pen. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, but Blair's art is so recognizable. He always does these like concentric kind of. They're concentric circles, but they're kind of shifted. And he does these slip, 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 colored yep. slip, slip design, slip, slip casting. Yep. Very recognizable, and then boom, there it was on the cover of Ceramics Monthly. It was so exciting to see, because he's a neighbor. He, well, kind of a neighbor. You're not really We're neighbors. Neighbor. We're neighbors. We're neighbors, right here in Richmond. We claim it. Claim it. So I was so excited to get him on tonight, because he's like a celeb now. Yeah, not that you weren't before. Not true. And I just met Blair for the first time at the Inseca. You know, Inseca, the clay conference is coming to Richmond 2020. That's where we first met. And then I took my kids on a, on a field trip to VCU. Virginia Commonwealth University, number one public art school in the nation. That's right. And I ran into Blair there. And, oh, it was so fun because you had your students doing the project for a table for two. Oh, that's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it kind of inspired me. I have my kids doing, we're doing a table setting for a chicken and waffle party. Oh, that's fun. So one oh, kid's cool. making six plates. Oh, I love that. And other kids, so we, we're going to have a total of 12. So the kids are all making, like, cups, bowls. Cool. It'll be fun. So yeah, so Blair's here tonight, guys, girls. Thanks for tuning in Monday night. Yeah, we do. Uh, I have a tableware class, which is dedicated strictly for sort of utilitarian ceramics, which is really nice. A lot yeah. of schools uh, are kind of going the opposite way at, at sort of the university level, moving more towards uh, sort of interdisciplinary and farther away from you know more thinking about clay as a media. Um, that isn't specific to pots or sculpture yeah. or whatever. It, it can be so Even many things. Even the IB level, I feel like they're wanting mm -hmm. the kids to get more away from functional. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that's, there's just not a lot of schools that teach it and teach it at a really rigorous I level. Love so, the functional. Um, yeah, so our tableware class is really an opportunity to kind of, um, you know, really be inquisitive about utilitarian pots. And I think what's great about it is so many students end up making things that are really challenging what pots are and what pots can be. So I have a table for two assignment, 
And that uh, comprises the entire second part of the semester, so from midterm yeah. until final. And they, uh, really what I talk about with that assignment or what the kind of crux of it is, is it's not just making dishes, it's crafting a dining experience. So they're to really think about the table, think about how they sit, think about the lighting, think about the ambiance, think about if there's music yes, and all that kind details. of stuff. And, so, and then we take over a gallery space and we have that meal happen. So it's really kind of a nice experience. Where's but, the food come um, from? They make the food oh either ahead of gosh. time and have somebody bring it or whatever, but they serve their you guests. Dines. It's the, the artist and their they one in, guest. They invest they invite one guest. And are they all in the one gallery having their dinner at, for two so at the same time? So the last project we did was at the Anderson Gallery, which is on the VCU campus. And uh, it was probably it was throughout the whole building, which is kind of like a four or five story building with maybe, I want to say like a dozen different gallery spaces throughout. So they kind of just sort of popped up wherever they oh wanted. God, so so cool. It was cool because there was like that's rooms where there was paintings cool. on the wall and we were dining. That should have been a video. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, it was did you great. get to document it? Yeah, we did. We photo documented it. Oh um, my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah, there was photo documentation of it. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, we didn't get a video of it, unfortunately. Next time. Yeah, next time. It's so, I, I kind of have to like be a teacher, you know, too. So it's like, yeah. I'm like walking around kind of like, you know, stewarding that process as well. Yeah. yeah, but what's really nice about it is when you when you activate your artwork vis-a-vis -vis food and company, like no longer, the, the sort of critical position changes, right? Because like the food and how it's served becomes the critic. Oh, okay. Your guest becomes the critic. Like the yes. overall experience becomes the critic. Yes. So it's really kind of like, you know, we, we always, in, especially in school, we tend to make very uh, sort of hypothetical art. You know, it's like you put it in a crit room and you have a hypothetical audience, you know, and it's a hypothetical gallery space. But Sometimes it's not, like the critics are the ones that you've been working with side by side. Yeah, and, like, and then, so how much can you possibly, like, step out of your friend's yes, work? You yes, know? So I think I um, what POTS do is they really... Um, you know, they, they really act, uh, they really show you, they really give you sort of cold hard facts about how things work. So um, I love activating things like that. What with the functional ceramics? Well, first, okay, I, I'm dying to know this, so I'm going to ask you. And hi, Brazil, just so you can see. Blair's never oh, done the live, neat. so he Look can, like, that. see your comments. Awesome conversation. Oh, Thanks, stuff Brooks. Is happening. Brazil, which we'll, yeah. we're going to map, y'all. We'll have to map Brazil oh, in just yeah. a little bit. But I want to know, I did ask Blair, I tried to refrain from asking Blair all these questions prior, but um, in terms of your journey in clay. Yeah. Blair's journey didn't start until he was 18. I did find that out, but I want to know everything. You want to like, everything? Were, your, were your parents artists? Was it oh, that's a approved? Question. Was it supported? Oh, that's a great question. Did you always love clay? Had you ever oh, known it? that's a great question. Before 18? Okay. Oh, yeah, so many good so, questions. And meanwhile, I'm just going to throw out that I found this bag of red clay. I mixed red um, mason stains in and it's really stiff. And then my white clay is really soft. So I'm having a, if you see it's uncentered, it kind of is, so, but you know. Uh, boy, okay, where did so, that start? So, uh, Blair, little Blair to, to Oh, yeah, little Blair. Blair. Okay. Little Blair to big Blair. Tell little me everything. Blair. Um, so, my uh, my parents were not artists, okay. uh, except kind of they were. Uh, so, my, my, my dad wasn't. Um, for sure, but uh, my mother was a dressmaker. Oh, so yeah, um, she's a maker. She was a maker for sure, but she really had no identity as a craftsperson or an artist at all. She was, um, well, she thought of herself as an artist, but when she did like oil paintings and stuff. She, she didn't really... She did paintings too? Uh, as a hobby. Yeah, oh, as a hobby. Wow. But um, as a dressmaker, she really approached it vocationally. It was really like, it was her, her way job. of making money. So yeah. she made wedding gowns and prom gowns. She did that in our home. So, wow. um, so there was always kind of a really close connection to um, sort of making and yeah. also a really uh, great sort of role model in terms of, of like a craft work ethic. Like my mom worked, worked at home and she worked really like you know, nonstop at home, you know, and, and it was really a great sort of life work blend because she could stop what she was doing at any time and do things that needed done or whatever. And then she would go right back to work. Did you have siblings? Work. I did have siblings, but they were much older. Okay, um, so you're the baby? Yeah, I'm the baby. Yeah. yeah, my sisters are 10 and 12 years older than okay. me. Okay. So, um, so they were already, let's just say, so they got the boy house. with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I, not necessarily artist, but definitely my mother was a maker. Um, and uh, in terms of support, I think my mother was always really supportive of like everything, so it really wasn't <laughs> exceptional. Um, what a good mom. Yeah, and I don't know so much about, uh, um, 
I, I won't go into my <laughs> my dad's relationship there because I, I think there was less support there. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, I didn't. You know, art was uh, not a thing that I was terribly interested in in okay. high school. I took like an art class, but it was so like just an easy A kind of class for me. Um, As I think it still is today. Yeah, I thought of it that easier. way. Right? I stole your yellow. Oh, that's cool. Whatever. Um, so uh, I didn't take art in high school, but I took my first serious sort of art class, uh, my first year of community college, and I took it totally on on a whim from um, uh, just a friend of mine that was uh, took it and really liked not just Clay but also the professor. That was oh, okay. like the real selling point. Was uh, this this uh, potter named Bill West? And Bill was super interesting. He um, he had made pots for like 25 years and supported his family as a production potter oh, before he cool. got an MFA and started teaching. So there was this really nice... Um, he was kind of legit. Like, yeah, he was legit. And he also had a very kind of vocational approach to making pots. And so I could kind of like, you know, my when I first got serious about pots, I was very much thinking... I'm going to be a production potter, and I'm going to do kind of craft fair circuit, and I'm going to do what Bill did, you know? Yeah, because that um, was the dream. That was the dream, and things are so much different now, you know? Um, uh, just the whole way the market looks is so much different from then. But, uh, so that's really how I got started, and I took it as an elective, and I, I just never stopped, really. I mean, I know that's kind of a cliche, but it's just it's the truth. It's so true. You know, it's just the truth that really hooked me, and before that... Um, cheers. Oh, yeah, cheers. And... If you haven't seen Blair's work yet, flash your tats, because it's very reminiscent of his tattoos. I yes. do. I have these yes. patterns. I don't know if you can patterns. see Patterns. That's the key. I have a lot of decoration, and I really like decoration a lot. So. Decoration. See, I, all my stuff's like white. Yeah, you make very uh, Spartan pots, oh, I think, Spartan. Sometimes. I like that. But that's not true. So, I mean, you're embedding a lot of colored clay into stuff, you know? Yes, because I don't like to glaze, and then the color's done. Hello. Right. Hi, Molly. I can't watch as I'm at work, but oh. we'll watch tonight. I'm an art teacher and love watching you teach. Ooh, well, neat. Blair teaches at the college level, so I teach at the high school level, and we're just chatting now. I can't wait to get all the scoop of, hello, thanks for tuning in, color, waves, waves back at y'all. Um, but yeah, so Blair fell in love with Clay, it seems like, um, as an elective at yeah, community, college. community College, never looked back, and then so, then what? So and look at the shape there, that you're just whipping um, out, and I'm just going to get this torch in case you want it. Oh yeah, cool. So from there, um, I, uh, I got an associate's degree there. In what? Like what? Well, so, I had a ton of majors because I, I wasn't like a, I'm a, a first, Hi Henry. That's I'm my a student. first generation, um, college, I guess, yeah, I guess even high school graduate, but college, oh, nice. college student. Congrats. So, um, we didn't make everybody proud, Blair. Well, my mom graduated from high school, but nobody else might have. That's uh, amazing. anyway, so, um, it's gotta feel good. Oh, it's all right. Um, so, um, I think, um, yeah, so I never had any pressure to go to college at all. That wasn't a thing. So it was kind of on my own terms, and I paid for it myself, so, like, nobody cared, you know? So, um, so right. I Right, you started, didn't have anybody yeah, saying, like, you're not going to be an art major. Totally. And I never had the, like, That's true. like, my dad's a doctor, so i got to be a doctor thing. Like, that never was a thing. That's so, a good lesson. Everybody yeah, watching, when like, you pay for it yourself, you can do whatever you want. You do whatever want. you want. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Who's um, going to check you, Bill? So, um, yeah, so I think... Um, I started school as a psychology major because I didn't know what else to major in, and I thought that was a good one. Because why? You like uh, helping people? You like talking I to people? Yes, so. It just sounded interesting, Everybody's I guess. Gone. And uh, when I was in uh, community college, I worked at a psychiatric and addiction hospital, which was super great, and I loved it, but it quickly was not something I wanted to do you yeah. know, for a career. Yeah. So that was part of it, and then um, I ended up... Uh, I, so I was a psychology major first, a creating a creative writing major second, an okay. anthropology major third, and finally I got an associate's degree in liberal arts. That was my last degree. Okay. Um, but that was really just because I had, you know, I'd spent so much time there, and um, you know, I, I needed to kind of move on with things. So I got an uh, associate's degree in liberal arts. I'm just like amazed because, so Blair's saying how his college professor was like the role model, doing the circuits of all the craft fairs, and like thinking of you now, like on the cover of Ceramics Monthly. I just can't say that enough because know, that is tell. like a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Cover of Ceramics Monthly, and it's this guy. This guy. Your teacher 
be so proud. Does he know? Is he still around? Yeah, he's still around. Does I just, he know? I actually just went out there. It's fun because I have the monitor and I can actually look at the form that I'm making. Like, it's kind of nice. I don't have I to I know. And this. I'm like, do you have any uh, tips of making this? I have so many questions. Well, it's not working out so well, so no. And I just stabbed it with my ribs, so absolutely oh, not. okay. If you want to hit it with the torch, I got it right behind but, um, you. Yeah, he does know. Actually, I, I keep in touch with him. I just went out there as a visiting artist um, this year. I went in November, and this is my 20th year making pots, and I started making pots there. So it was a really nice, uh, and it's his retirement year, too. So it was just this beautiful sort of correlation between, like, you know, um, going back to this school that was so influential for me and um, working with this potter that, you know, it's so funny how the dialogue changes, you know, like Once from, older. yeah, from a person, you know, like when you're a kid and you just sort of hang on every word that your professor gives you, and then you're having these, like, 20 years later, these really interesting dialogues about the field and that academia, and, like, now I'm a professor, and he has been a professor yeah. for a long time, so, like, I have a different kind of role model mentorship kind of program yes. with him, because, like, because like, I'm, like, tell me all about, like, how you deal with these problems yes. that come up in academia, faculty you know? meetings. Yeah, like, how are you dealing with these things? How how am I dealing with this torch? Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. How does it All right, work? this one, I think you've got a. It's actually kind of funny because for David Camden throwing his sectional, I don't know if, if y'all tuned in, but got this torch. Everybody wanted to know how to do the torch, and then it didn't work. No, but boy. this one, no, this one's gonna work. You gotta open her all the way up, oh. and then wait. There we hey, go. Thanks. There we go. Cool. We had two torches going that night. Oh I was a little gosh. like, oh my gosh. That's cool. Oh my gosh, so this is tight right here. Yeah, it's really tight. I'm just torching this just to dry this little belly out a little bit. I pushed it. I got the form kind of halfway established, and then I decided it needed to be a little wider, and that was not the right move. Because it once you can start to get complex bends in something, um, you really shouldn't go and try to push it too much. That's kind of the last step. So I kind of put one step ahead of the other, and now I'm trying to... Um, Go that back turn is so bit. beautiful. Like you have such a perfect curve. So good. Yeah, I'm loving the dialogue. Yeah. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Any, if you have a question, I'll pop it up. Let's see. We got some waves, hearts. All right. So, was your friend that got you into taking the class? What's he doing now? She. She. She's a potter. Oh, cool. Oh, good. <laughs> I'll give a shout out to Donna Flannery. Yeah, hey Donna. Uh, she's in uh, Missoula, Montana. Um, yeah, she's in Missoula, Montana. So, uh, yeah, so Bill Bill made a number of potters. Um, That's amazing. Which is awesome. How long have you been teaching college? Have, have been any of them come back as like, for, you kind of graduating I've class? been in academia now uh, for nine years. Wow, so yeah. Oh, sorry, I've been at VCU for uh, about five. Okay. So yeah, so I have actually had some students that have moved on, which is really nice. Like it's super cool to. Yeah. It's one of the like the tough things about this time of year is writing like endless letters of recommendations for people. But at the same time, it's like so fruitful when they move yeah. on and get like into the ad program they want or they get the jobs they want. And yes. It's great, you know. Like I love. It's one of the the. I, it's like the best thing about teaching is actually seeing the results, you know, and like seeing, seeing the people that yeah, like they're just the. Um, you know, I think art is really like you never figure it out. You know, right? Like, that's why I love like, it. You're always learning. You always you're always fail. learning, and you're always asking hard questions. So it's not like, you know, um, it's not like they they've gotten there. You know, yes. but they're they're sort of like solidly on the path. And, and like, yeah, they're like that. gonna keep following. Like they're in it. Yeah, I have to. Uh, we got a question about: Do you ever get cracks from the torch and drying unevenly from the inside question. versus outside? I love a good question. Kinda, yeah. Um, I, I do sometimes. Uh, I try to use the torch super sparingly, uh, and mostly like on a form like this that's kind of like a that globe form. shape. Look at that form. Um, you know, this is less risky than something like a handle or a spout or like a small detail. If this had small details, those small details would dry really fast. And that can encourage some cracking. The other benefit is that this clay wall is pretty thin, or pretty consistent the whole way down. If I had a really thin spot, that would dry much faster, and that's when that crack is going to happen. So it's a good question. If you're going to if you're going to use a torch with your work, uh, it, it's a skill like any other. It's a skill just like any other. So you'll over torch it for sure, you know, and you'll under torch it and think you torched it enough that it'll collapse and all that stuff. So. Start using a torch and asking questions about it is the best way. Yeah, but Remember I do a torch is a tool, not a toy. Torch tool, is definitely a, a tool, toy. and you have to know how to use it, but also when to use it and when not to use it. So I've seen two uh, questions about plates. Tips for throwing, somebody else said tips oh, for playing plates, tips I'll for throwing plate. plates and bowls. Oh, I'll throw a plate. 
Yay. Yeah, sure. And hey, while my hands are clean, what did we have earlier? I saw it mm -hmm. in New Mexico. I saw it There was Chile. a Brazil, I know that. Brazil, Brazil. I want to go to Brazil so I bad. do too. Oh I've never been gosh. to South America. Neither have I. There's a lot of people it's who tune in from Argentina. Yeah, it's a super bucket list. Oh, let's see, where else? New, Mex New Mexico. Where else are y'all from? Where else are you from? Oh, Long Island. Got you, Long Island. Where else? Tips for double wall vessels. Ooh, I want to do that. Do you know how to do that? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah. I don't know how to do that. Oh, let's I've never do done that. it. Like a let's double wall like vase? Yeah. Stop it. That's a good question. Well, it depends what what kind of double wall vessel, like a donut? Instant. Or like said a, a double wall vessel. You just said vessel. What kind of double wall vessel? Iowa. I'll show you a couple different ways, yeah? Croatia. Okay, we'll do that. Oh my gosh, I can't wait for that. So I do this, I do this at, at school actually. Um, I demo for my projects, you know, that I assign, but I also have uh, days that I call You Call It Demos. And so students come with their questions, like how do I make this, how do I make that, I want to make this thing, I've never done it. And then we kind of figure it out together. If I don't know how to do it, I'll be like, well, I have a hypothesis, this is how I think I might do it. Yes. And then I'll give it a shot in front of them. And, but wait a minute, uh, are you, how many kids are in your class? Uh, usually about 14 or 15. And if, if one kid says, I want to see a double wall thing, yeah. Sweden, California. Oh, man, um, and is, if uh, one kid wants to see it, yeah. and the other kids don't, oh, are don't they... Are they watching though? Do you make them watch? Well, um, it, it depends. Uh, usually in that situation, um, Venezuela. Usually in that situation, most students will watch. I, I have the because they like, want to see the tricks. Like yeah, they want to see. Yeah, and and like I mean, that's kind of what they're there for. It's like right. learning how to they're make college. Stuff. Are they so majors or are they electives? Most of them are majors, and they're craft and material studies majors. So they might spend a good amount of time in clay, and they might spend a good amount of time in another media, and they might blend all media. So it's kind of interdisciplinary in that respect. That's so fun. But um, I want to go back to VCU and take all your classes. But, um, so, I do have, um... Look at that form! That form is a stunner. Is it? It's a know. stunner! I, I think you're being generous. No! Right. I um, just don't do that many shaped pieces. I love it. So, I think, um... What was I going to say? So, yeah, I do these... That was all the way on, yeah. And what's great about it is, like, quite often, um, students will throw me for a loop. You know, they'll come don't up with something. Don't you love that, though? I love it, yeah. That's what I love as a teacher, you call it like... Demos. We call them as always start with a picture. So we yes. don't get to do that here, but you know, when somebody said, I want to see a double walled vessel, my immediate instinct was draw it and show me what you want and I'll try to make it. You know, so yes. I think about like, you know, it's I think it's really, really, really important for us as teachers to like try stuff we don't know in front of students and totally fail. Oh like, gosh, like, I fail all the time. How do you teach somebody that it's okay to fail without doing it yourself? Yeah. You know, like, how oh, do you I do hope that? my kids like, realize that. Do y'all realize that how when do I fail? You do it? And, Failing is inherent to this. Like yeah. you can't get better without failing. It's and you never no reach a part of possible. not failing. No way. It's not possible. Yeah. Um, and the failures just get bigger as you go. But yes. we continue to fail. I continue to fail all the time. So it's just important to do that. So I love throwing myself out for like a loop and saying like, oh, I'm gonna try to make this thing I never knew how to make. And that like kind of teaching um, Look at that came to me kind of from uh, visiting high schools. I used to do a lot of high school visits and when I taught in Michigan. Like and you I, were teaching at college level? And yeah, and I would, I would do like outreach and stuff for, oh. for high schools and, um, and just do like free workshops and stuff for places that didn't have a lot of clay. And um, but the the best slash worst thing to do is say, okay, what should I make? Because they're like, throw an elephant, and I'm like, oh, uh, God, you're like, like wait a minute. Yeah, but you have to kind of figure it out, and that's kind of the fun of it. You yeah. Know? Like, so did you throw an elephant? Oh God, well I don't know how well I did, but and I don't know if I actually got an elephant, but you know what I mean? It's like it's tough, like in that respect. But that's one of the great things about teaching is that like. Gone are the days where professors stand at the front of the class and profess, you know? It's like really a community of learners. So yes. if you can get like students engaging in a way where none of us know, and, and none of us have the answers, and, yes. but we're all gonna try to figure it out to the best of our ability, like that's the teaching dynamic I love. Yes. You know, like, that's what I want every time in the yes. classroom. I did elementary um, before oh, high you did? school. And oh. I got more hugs and stick figure love notes, and it was so adorable. <laughs> but the learning at high school, like the questions, yeah. and, and that oh, they can gosh, independently brother. research. Look, Rachel, she says we're her idols. You're our idols, Rachel. Can I put that Where's there? That? Oh, put it wherever. I don't even know what you put. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, oh. Yeah, so that goes there. Look, just no bad. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm like amazed that you just took it off. You yep. didn't take your whole bat off. You took the whole oh, yeah, I don't pot know. off. 
Well, see, I know. always talk about how I love the bat, like bat and like okay, this. You don't need a bat, guys. You don't need so bat. double walled vessels. I don't know what that looks like, but I'm gonna try. Oh my gosh, it. can you do something like that double walled? Uh, <laughs> that's crazy. Not today. Cylinder. Not today. Just do yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do. I'm first, gonna, I'm gonna throw a donut. Is it do like a, a chip and dip, like a connected it piece? It could be. Yeah, it could be. Do you want to throw a donut? I think so. Oh. Like you it's open a double walled vessel, right? Yeah. Is that what, is I want to see something mean? other than a donut. Okay, I won't do I think a donut. I know a donut, but right, I want to so see. So we'll do. Oh, that's kind of hard. Guys, so somebody just requested Blair to do a double walled vessel. A double walled vessel. I'm kind of like, I want to see that too. So there's two ways to do it. Well, I'm sure there's there's infinite ways to do it. There's two that I know or that I think I can figure out. Yeah. You might so feel like I've done this. Yes, Rico. You talk amongst yourselves. Cheers. Well, we'll cheers in a talk second. I'm yourselves. so excited. I've been looking forward to this Monday. It's All been right. really fun to have other potters that just uh, throw. Gosh, and yeah, we talk clay. And I feel like y'all learn a lot. I, I'm fiddling a lot. It's super fun to just throw whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's just fun. Do you okay. know Kelly Kerr? You know Kelly Kerr. Yeah, I'm Kelly, yeah. She was so cute. She came on, and I'd look, and she, she'd be over there, like, wedging her clutch. She had just made a cute little mm. face, and then oh. she, I'm looking over, and she's arching it. And I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, oh, yeah, I just, it's, it's, we're just having fun. I'm like, yeah, oh, but that was so right. cute. It's so fun. So fun. Um. All right, so this double walled so vessel. A double walled vessel, but I saw so many questions. Oh, there's, are there more questions? Yeah, because, like, you're a professor now, oh, and yeah. you were at the community college, just loving clay, and then now you're here. Yep. So... That's right. Nothing happened in between. Nothing happened. <laughs> you just woke up. I just ended up here. And you're on the cover right? Yeah, so I finished an uh, associate's degree. I moved on to a four or to a, a university. I moved on to the University of Montana, Missoula. And uh, that's where your friend, your teacher, no, didn't you mention no, that No, that earlier? was Twin Falls, Idaho. Twin Falls, Idaho is where I started okay. at the community college. Got a bachelor's degree in Montana, University of Montana in Missoula. And then after uh, undergrad, I went to, um, I got a job at the Northern Clay Center in Minneapolis. And I made clay and loaded kilns there for two years. Uh, and during that time, kind of prepared a, a portfolio for graduate school. And you're so, paying all this yourself. You said you well, paid all this yourself. Oh, yeah, I paid for school myself for sure. Because um, that I feel like stopped, like I don't need, I feel like I don't need a master's degree because I don't want to go pay for one. Mm-hmm. But you did. You went and paid for it all, and you found all these degrees. Uh -huh. And look at you and now. I have all the student loans to prove it. Uh. <laughs> yeah, but uh, in my case, it was totally worth it. I mean, I think uh, everybody has Obviously their, it's own, totally worth it. Look their at you. own um, reasons for getting an MFA or not, or whatever. Yeah. But uh, I, you know, what was great about taking two years off from school and working at, as a resident artist in Minneapolis was that I got it was a paid job. So I didn't make a lot of money an hour, but it was enough that I could have a small apartment and live modestly. So and that was a great time. More, yeah. you're and like it was, so much more. And at that time, it's like, you know, the hustle is real. So I work 25 hours a week or so, and then I'm in the studio outside of that. You know, like your friend so circles are So you're still are making. You never yeah. stopped making. No, Where no, was your I, studio? Like my studio was at the Northern Clay Center. Okay. So I had my own space. Wow. Um, and so and your friends end up being your studio mates, you know. So you end up, your social circle becomes those people that are around you and your life just gets enmeshed with clay, you know. So yes. after that I uh, finished my, uh, I finished that two year stint uh, and I got into graduate school, I went to grad school in New York, upstate New York at um, the New York State College of Ceramics, uh, most, most commonly called Alfred University. Oh uh, yeah. And uh, that was a two year program as well. Uh, and so I finished that and then I started uh, mostly teching, uh, being a, a studio technician, but also teaching uh, wheel throwing classes in Michigan at Grand Valley State. So Look that was you, kind of all the over of the country. So, and then I, I've also been working as an artist the whole time. So, uh, you know, just having an active studio career outside of that too. But. So I'm just gonna catch you all up on what yeah, I'm doing okay, here because yeah. this is a double oh walled vessel. So I've got a chunk of clay centered. I open it up in in the inside, and I opened up kind of a modest floor. I can pick this up and show it to you. Um, you know, I've got a lot of clay here, a whole lot of clay right here, and this is actually clay that I'm gonna put back on the wheel. And uh, I'm gonna just let my finger go in and kind of open another centered hole right here. I don't know how well you can see that, but I'll show you after I do it. Um, but anyway, I've got, I haven't opened this all the way up like I would a regular vessel because it's going to be double walled, so the wall is pretty thick. It, oh my it gosh. It seems pretty thick in terms of the I weight. mean, I think I've only seen this as like a low, like a chip and dip or oh, like yeah. a low that donut, but too. never a, too, like yeah. a form. So it's recentered. I'm going to open it right here, and I'll probably do that with my index finger out. Look, I'm trying to plan a college visit to Alfred. Oh, great. Good for you. That is so exciting. 
Yeah, good for you. I liked it there a lot. It was really, I went there for graduate school, and um, it was extremely difficult in all the best ways. Um, I can't say this enough, like, the, the thing you want to hear about a grad program is that it was extremely difficult. Like, yeah. if you hear that a graduate program was very easy, run the other way. Like, you've got a limited amount of time and you want to get the most out of it. And Isn't that's that a true baby class? It's just true. Like, yeah, the easy route is going to get you the piece of paper, but it's not going to get you the education. So, um, it's really important that you check it out. But I liked it there a lot. It was right for me. So this is what I have now. Um, and it's kind of like, it could really easily be a chip and dip. I could lay this down and I could build that up and I'd have a chip and dip. Okay. But instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw Need this to inner wall up. I'm going to throw this outer wall up. I'm going to bring them together so they have uh, an equal distance the whole way up. And then I'm going to close it off at the top. So it's kind of an elongated donut with a ball. Is it always more successful to do the interior pull first? You know, it's funny. Uh, I was just thinking about that and I'm not sure. I don't make enough of them for it to okay. be buried in my kind of tacit knowledge. So I'm thinking through it, uh, but I think I'll do a little bit of both and see what happens. You know what, this makes um, me want to ask a question. We had questions earlier. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, wait, you're pulling, but... It doesn't matter. I can pull and, and listen. We have this great question um, from M. Mallet, 356. What is the difference between clay and porcelain? Oh, I love that. Um, so there is really no difference because porcelain is clay. Um, so really the, the general terms there is clay. So clay is, um, is a kind of rock, geologically speaking, clay is a kind of rock that's extremely fine particle, it's extremely small. Uh, I've heard one definition as it's the smallest particle of rock. But one thing about clay that's extremely different and different from every other kind of rock is that it's chemically bonded to water. And so I'm not going to go deeply into that, but the thing that allows clay to be stretchy is the fact that water is inherently bonded to clay particles. So that's the difference between clay and ceramic. Ceramic is fired clay, meaning that when you fire clay, you break its bond to water, and so it can no longer be reconstituted. That's why if you take a dry pot and you dip it, dip it in a bucket of water, it turns into slop. Yeah. But if you bisque pot and you dip it in a bucket of glaze, it doesn't turn into slop. My right? students today. So, talk about that. The, so clay is going to be any, um, clay is just a general sort of generic term for uh, that feldspathic rock that's chemically bonded to water. And Porcelain itself is a, um, is just a white clay body. Um, and I'm using that term clay body now because that's important. Clay comes straight out of the ground. A clay body is a, is a mixture. It's like a recipe that we mix together um, to give us the most advantage in the studio. So we can change its firing temperature up and down. We can change the color of it. We can change the workability, all based on things we put together. So porcelain is typically a clay body that's just extremely white. And it relies yeah. a lot on kaolin, uh, where this clay body likely relies a lot on other kinds of clays. Yeah, and there's more sort of technical stuff about how clay is white and how clay is darker colored, but um, that's the general kind of uh, uh, general sense of what that clay is. So, versus so porcelain clay. is clay. clay it's just a specific People flavor. People say that throwing porcelain is like throwing bubble gum, which I've I've never mm -hmm. thrown porcelain. I've never touched. I've never thrown porcelain. Bubble gum. I don't know about that. Okay. I've heard a lot of cream cheese. Oh. Um, and it's kind of like cream cheese. So it's real the, soft. The thing about cream, well, you know, or not cream cheese. Think of porcelain. Um, it's not necessarily soft. It, it gets firm just like any other clay. Um, but it, it, does, it only has smooth particles. It doesn't have any heavy particles like grog or grog. sand. Uh, and so it's really smooth particles. It feels a lot like this, actually. Okay. Um, but uh, so it tends to have a little less body, a little less tooth. It tends to kind of slump easier. Uh, um, and then it also warps a little bit more in the kiln. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, so um, the more uh, sort of uh, different densities of particles you have, the different sizes, the stronger it is. It's kind of like aggregate and concrete. You know, like yes. the more different sizes you have, the tighter the particles pack. Yeah. Gosh, I love it. So, I love getting so someone who can talk all the... Porcelain isn't anything special other than it's white clay. Yeah, it's what it is. Why make anything with a double wall? That's my dad. That's Frank. Oh, hey, Look Frank. Look what's drinking out of your mugs, Frank. Why make anything with a double wall? Cheers. Why make anything? <laughs> Why make anything? That's a good... I mean, that's a good really? rhetorical hey, look. question. Cheers. Shout out. Cheers. Cheers. Why make anything with a double wall? Is, that's what student waves Might be right some now. really good reasons. Um, so in terms of a practical reason, this is going to be a super insulating vessel. So if I'm making like an ice bucket or if I'm making a, something that's going to have a hot liquid in it, it's going to be really nice to insulate my hands against that. So that's one good reason. Another that's reason, a good idea. Yeah, yeah. So, and another reason might be that like 
Uh, I know there's a potter named Peter Biesecker who makes these really great uh, martini cups. Ooh, and so the man, top of martini. them are kind of like this shape, but it looks like a tumbler. So it's a double-walled vessel, and you don't have to hold that tiny stem. Yes. You hold this nice tumbler, but the martini but you're not glass part it is up. Visit. Exactly. It stays yeah. cool. So it's really nice. It's an insulating vessel. Insulation. The other reason is it's just super cool to have a pot that looks thick and heavy and yes. you lift up and it's nice yes. and light. It's just a cool trick, you know. Yeah, so it is. A, this I is love very that highly technical. It. Yeah. So I'll just pick up and show you what I have right now. So right now I've thrown this interior, uh, I bisected this, if you didn't see that part, uh, I bisected this thick lump of clay here. You can go back and watch a few yeah, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. So I bisected that, and then I just threw this, this interior cylinder, it's just a cylinder. Now I'm gonna come, I'm gonna throw this upper, this other part up, and then I'm gonna join the two at the top. So I'll have a double walled vessel. I'll cut it in half when I'm done, so you can see kind of what that looks like. So exciting. That's interesting, so it says, I think they're going to be sad when you cut it in half. So the other thing you can do is, um, which is kind of nice, is if you have a double-walled vessel and you want to have uh, you want to have it contain liquid or contain food or something, the outside you could incise. You could cut decorations out and have a nice kind of shadow oh, behind and you could see that, that cylinder. So oh. There's all sorts of like cool reasons for it, but really the reason is like, I don't know, make some double-walled vessels and see what they do. You know, see kind of and what... And your skills. Um, yeah, just see what they do for you. Like maybe they'll re really resonate and you'll get some good ideas. Like I think one of the important things is that like... Um, you know, we make work as a way of knowing. Like, you don't have to know before you start. That's a, that's a myth. It's a myth to say, like, well, I have to know exactly what my intention is or what I'm going to get out of this before I make it. Like, no, just make something and then ask, what did that do? You know, like, if I make this double-walled vessel, I'm like, I don't actually know what this is for. Fire it and put it in your kitchen. Like, figure it out some way, right? This becomes information in the world. Okay, so, and I um, love that, but that contradicts everything I tell my students, so I hope some are oh, watching. Don't. But no, I love that. What do you um, mean? How does it contradict? What, how do you think about it? So making is knowing, is what he said. So I tell them, like That's I probably one of my students who said that. Benjamin, Benjamin Taylor. Ben Taylor. Ben Taylor, you know Ben Taylor. I don't know. Ben Taylor, thanks for the comments. Thanks I everybody a, for tuning in. I have a in Benjamin, but I don't remember if his last name is Taylor. Maybe it last is. Last names are hard. I feel like we. Um, We've been saying making is knowing like nonstop this semester. Making because is knowing. It's, it's true. Just, it's it's a more way about the knowing, process right? than the product. But I guess so. My students, we work on a. Sem we only have each other for a semester. This class, it's okay. only a semester. Okay. And I tell them like we just this on Friday they had to submit their two sketchbook pages of their idea for their winter, their spring art show. Okay, so that's what I have so far. Two okay, there's a small cylinders. cavity in there, yeah. I made it a little thicker than I typically would just so I could pick it up and show you all. Like this, right? um, but uh, yeah, so typically I'd throw the inside a little bit and the outside a little bit and kind of get them oh, okay. together. Yeah, oh, okay. I'm trying to just kind of this get through amazing. this. This is amazing. I'm amazed. But I make, so they were supposed to have gotten their ideas together so that uh -huh. now once they have their idea, that's their roadmap to success. Right. But I guess because we're creating for a show. It's good to have times when you're creating just to create. Well, I, I think, so we're all gonna figure out our own practice, right? We all yeah. gonna figure out our own relation to this. Some people are gonna work super experimentally and not know yes. and sort of step into the unknown. And other people are gonna have really good idea about what they want. Like it all depends. Like, so if I'm gonna make a piece about like, I don't know, like war or something, like I'm probably gonna ask what's gonna best communicate my idea and how do I visually represent those things so that that point is understood, yes. right? That's one way, yes. but it's not the only the way. The only way, The other right? way could right. be, man, I watch a lot of media about these topics and I think a lot about these things. I'm gonna go in the studio, I'm just gonna make a mess. And then you can ask yourself, like, how does this go back and sort of inform the things that I'm taking in, the things I'm thinking about, you know? Like, I, I read a lot of uh, nonfiction about sort of science and culture and anthropology and, um, I that think, background, what was that first major you had? Yeah, I was an anthropology major for like a little yeah. bit. But, um, and psychology too, but my work isn't inherently about that, but I'm sure there's some parts of the way that I'm thinking yeah. that are informed by yes. that, right? Like you can't separate the two. Yeah. So, so it isn't that one approach is right or wrong, it's just we're all going to have our own relationship. And um, I think it's important to kind of like figure out kind of how we make, and that only comes by making a lot of stuff. That's the only way to get there, is to make a lot of stuff, and then notice kind of these patterns, you know? Like, I work in, um, you know, I, I tend to do this thing in my own practice, for example, where I make a, a long series of work. It's maybe like three or four years worth of work, and then I abandon it and move on to something else. So I've always done that. 
Um, so we're so going to stop just, seeing these you will. Yeah, you will, circles, actually. and that's just yeah, it? Do you, you ever come back to it? I don't know yet. Have you ever gone back to an old set? I don't know yet. You don't know yet? You're so young. You're still making well, it. I have a lot of ideas right now for some sculptural work. Ooh, I've, I've made a, I've made yeah, a lot of sculpture in, in the past. I've made a oh, lot of sculpture okay. in the past, actually. So, um, so I have some ideas You've right been doing now. these, like, cutout things. Yeah, yeah those are fun. Yeah, those are fun. All right, so I've got my double wall. I closed the top. I'll just so it pick looks it up so and show solid. You. So it looks solid, solid. But it's pop, not. Right? Um, so uh, I'll just rib it really quick. Do you have to worry about air bubbles? Well, in this one I would if I were um, gonna keep it. Yeah, I would. And you I just would... pop a hole in the bottom or something. Yeah, you don't really pop it anywhere. It doesn't have to be big. It need... A needle tool will do it. And I usually put it somewhere conspicuous, actually, so I can see it and fix it later, you know? Ooh. So I put it in the side or in the top or something. It doesn't really matter, but I want to poke a hole as soon as I can. Um, so I'm going to um, just rib this outside off. I could rib the top, to figure out what that looks like. Whatever, it doesn't matter. So I've got a double wall vessel here. I'll cut it in half and show you all what it looks like. My dad says now he wants to come on and make a martini glass. Let's do it! Let's do it. I'm going to come back with you. Double right walls. Now. My dad's been wanting to get the whole family on. Frank, we can have a whole family and add Blair. Because we're going to have a Blair throwdown. Well, yeah, I mean, Blair and Blair. Blair we'll get Blair Frank. Blair. We'll get okay. so, oh, look at that. Stuff. So this look is what that. it looks like. Ba -ba -doo 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 -doo. So there it is, right? So you've got a nice consistent floor across the bottom. Yeah. So I could still flip this over and trim a foot ring. No problem, right? And then this wall here, this cavity, um, pretty consistent walls all the way around. And then I, where I, I had enough clay at the top that I could fold that over and add some pressure. So I have a nice consistent sort of top part there too. So that's a pretty important part of this is not having any real thin spots. And it's going to be part of the skill building that comes with this is making sure that this top part isn't particularly thin or the bottom isn't particularly thin. But yeah, that's pretty much what it looks so like. so even. You got to yeah. put it up and show it closer. So that's okay. So... Look Ready? at that. Yeah, look at that. So there's that, okay? That, it's kind of hard to see in dimension. Double balls. That's what it looks like, okay? So go back and check it out if you missed any sections. Wow. So I'll, I'll show another one, too. Yeah, and this is kind another of a, one. This is from uh, one block of clay. What I'm going to do for the next one is throw sort of a pot. At, I'll throw a pot and... and not throw, but throw, like toss another pot inside of it. So I'll have a vessel that holds another vessel. Okay. So there's that. And those are the only methods I Yeah, need. just put that right there. Thank see ya. You. Oh my okay. gosh, I can't wait to see. You're going to throw a pot and cheers. Yeah, we'll put a pot inside of it. Yeah, why not? I don't know. And what? then we'll oh, think yeah. of another way to do it. <laughs> this is so fun. Very, very good. Claps, waves, impressive. He, the, he's on the cover of Ceramics Monthly for a reason, guys. Look at him. <laughs> ABC Pottery, aka Blair Clemo. Let's see. Um, oh, look, Abby Knight with my students. Hi, hey, Abby. Hey, Abby. Where or do they call you Mr. Plum? What do they call you? They definitely do not call me Mr. Plum. They call you Blair. They call me Blair. Yep. My students want to call me Molly, but I tell them they have to call. Wait, do you want a bat or are you going to throw it right on there? Uh, I'm the just going to cut it. Okay. Real quick. Um, Here you go. Oh, thank you. Uh, they have to call me Miss Sander. It's high school. Yes, high school. You have to. Yeah, I get that. And and I get they want to call me Molly, but it is rude technically. Yeah. So yeah. you have to be polite. I get it. Yeah. But they call you just Blair. Hey Blair. They just call me Blair. Yeah. Hey Blair. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. You hope so. Yeah. What else would they be? Called? Yeah, I don't know. I mean. That's... <laughs> My name is... You know what I thought was really cool? I call them by their first names. So. Yes, and I call mine by my their first names. And this, some of them I called them the wrong name. Henry! Oh, yay! There are two of the students. But wait, I need to figure out a new field trip for this group. I took the last semester to BC, but I think... Do y'all go on field trips at the college level? No, yeah, it's a little tougher, uh, but typically we um, we do go uh, to kind of area workshops. So, Ooh, um, like what? Well, you know, uh, uh, William and Mary will have workshops. Uh, Mary Washington will have workshops. Uh, sometimes students go to um, uh, Cub Creek and Appomattox. Oh. Um, so typically places like that. Um, our big field trip uh, once a year is to Enseca. So that's oh, our and you all go. Y'all do the sale, and then everybody we goes. We do. Yeah, we do a sale or a series of sales, and that's mostly orchestrated by the graduate students. A big that's shout out so for their labor. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, we, we go as a as a group pretty much. I'm not going to go and seek it this year. I have other things going on, but um, so typically we'll have lots of students end up there. Last year I think we had about 
between undergrads and grads, maybe about 18 students go. That's so awesome. Those are so we could drive. You yes. Know, but, we so drive, that's yeah. our big field trip is to NC. Yeah, go. that's me. We do a lot of fundraising and stuff for it, so it's a little lighter on the students' pockets. You and V are major here. What's you and V? Mary Washington. Oh. Is that right? But wouldn't that be? Did I get it right? Oh yeah, Mary Washington in in W. I can't read. It's so cool watching you guys. Sir, isn't it great to have Blair Clip on your ABC Potter, guys? If you haven't searched them, you got to search them. I just love it, too, because I tell my students, you need a recognizable piece. Like, I shouldn't look at a piece and think, oh, that reminds me of somebody else. In your work, it's like, oh, that's Blair. Like, you, you scroll through, and I see other people posting your work or having found your work and right, bought your right, mug, right. and they're like, I'm right, like, that's right, a Blair, right. that's a Blair. It's hard because, like, I think we all learn, you know, we, we all follow sources back, you know, like, ceramic history is accessible to all of us, and I get a lot of ideas from clay history, and um, we all start with the same basics, pretty much, so mm -hmm. I think it's hard because a lot of the time, you know, I'll just be making, and, like, in, anymore, especially with Instagram, like, I'll make something, and then I'll immediately see it, and that's not to say, that's definitely not to say that anyone's copying me or I'm copying anyone else, it's just part of sort of the culture of clay and the culture of making is that like, you know, I think there's multiple ways to think about trends and I think the least generous way is to think, well, people follow other people and they don't have their own ideas. I think that's a pretty snotty way of thinking about it yeah. because this is really hard. What we do is really hard. Well, like, I love that you say we, it, it is. I think it's, it's so fun. Really but it hard. is hard, I guess. It's hard to, to make brand new things that the world has never seen. Yes. That's a hard thing. You That's know? being like, an artist. Yeah, any sure. medium. So, of course, yeah. So, I think, um, you know, another way to think about trends is like, if everybody's making pots that are yeah. using something, a similar technique, what is it about the world? What is it about what we're taking in or what we're seeing or what we're thinking about culturally that's inspiring that? You know, it's just a better way of thinking about it. I think it's more generative, yeah. you know, so. And that's um, anthropology. So I see it a lot. Like I see, like, I see a lot of, it's funny, you know, and there's been times when I've been making things and it's completely out of vogue and like, the pots aren't selling and it's fine, I'm just making my own work. And there's other times where the trend kind of circles back and you're in that, immersed in it, you know, and you're like, oh, this is happening. And then the, the, the field kind of moves on and you're just doing your thing. And I think that's what happens. It kind of ebbs and flows. And I love that about it. Like, I'm satisfied making my own work. Um, and I really, like, I, I don't worry too much about, um, I, yeah, I don't worry too much about how well things are going to sell or marketing that kind and of stuff. And where do you don't. sell your stuff? Like, as a working yeah, potter, a like, obviously question. you're a professor, but you're well, a maker and you That's the answer, is that I'm a professor, and so the way that I get my work out there is tied kind of to my job in a lot of ways, um, because I have to uh, prove my research. Right? Yes, I have we to briefly prove talked that about that. I have to prove that I'm active in the field, and so a lot of the time my work will go out to exhibitions at galleries or museums or something, um, because those are resume lines for me. So quite often I sell my work through museums or galleries uh, that are well yeah, established. they take 50%? Uh-huh, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They take 50%. Um, I, have been, I have done one Instagram sale, uh, and I'll do more. Yeah, do you have like an um, Etsy or a website? I don't do an Etsy. I don't want to hold this for you because it's annoying. I definitely you know? have like a I website. You know, like I feel I need to fix this. Um, I definitely have a have website, website that I, I do, I did sell, I sell work through, but I don't do it on a regular basis because right. I'm busy teaching, you know, and doing other things. So I can't, if you buy something on a, on a Sunday night, I'm not going to be able to ship it until Thursday morning and that's not fair. So I think that's okay. I know it's okay, but it, it's hard. They want when, your work. It's hard to, uh, it's, it's hard to portray just how incredibly full my plate is. Um, and I just have other, other things that are concerned. He did just you know, fly so. back in from Telesat. You flew back in from where, uh, doing what? Portland. Uh, I got back in um, super late Saturday. But uh, yeah, so I went to, you know, so the, that's an example, right? So I teach all week um, till what, you know, teach Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. Um, and then I have to take off to leave for Portland. So I just got back from Portland. I have an exhibition up at the Eutectic Gallery in Portland. Uh, along with Brian Januski. It's a two-person show called Spectrum. And so uh, I went out there for the opening. Um, mostly I went out there, uh, yeah, I went out there for the opening to represent awesome. the work. And also, my, my really good friend, I'll do a shout out to Paige Wright. Ayo! Ayo! Uh, she lives out in Portland, and so I hung out with her a bunch. Um, she's a brilliant sculptor, br brilliant sculptor. So look at Paige Wright's work. 
Um, oh, they're saying they still want to see a plate and a bowl. I. Oh my gosh, how much time do I, you I can do, I'll do a plate over okay. here. If you do a plate, you can just push it all I down. I think it. not like five minutes. I five? Yeah, oh it gosh. gets okay. really fast. I'm going to go really fast. Frank okay. says, how is he going to make me a martini glass in just seven minutes? Frank, I'm going to do it right now. He's not, oh, you are? No, don't worry about That's it, That's right. I got you, brother, I got you. <laughs> don't worry about it. I this. didn't even think Frank's but request that. Here we go. So, um, so this is just a cylinder that I have right now. Okay, it's just a cylinder right here, right? Okay, so now you what I'm gonna do times. is I'm gonna measure, essentially, do you have calipers? Yes, I do, right okay. here. So I'm gonna take some calipers and I'm gonna measure this top part and I'm gonna throw just a little inset to this thing. So it's not gonna go all the way down to the bottom, I guess it could, but it's not going to. And it's gonna kind of, uh, this is fine. So it's gonna rely on the tension that the um, rim is gonna give it to hold it in place. So I can definitely get there. I've been talking a lot. Wait, um, I need to watch what okay, you're doing. So and with the plate, you just pr center all the way down and keep enough thickness so you can flip it and trim it. And then the key is compressing with the rib tool. I use the rounded edge to the right of center, reach the clay, and then center to three. Compress, 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 compress. Right, so is that what you would say about a plate? Yeah, it's great, compress. The, the word about a plate is, how do you make a plate? Compress. Compress. That's the answer. Rib so on you're good. the plate. As Compressed. long as you're compressing, plate. you're good. All right, Frank, so I got you. Um, so I'm going to throw a pretty thin, because I'm not going to have time to trim it or not have an opportunity to trim it. So I'm going to throw this kind of pretty thin um, little cup. I don't know. Do you drink big martinis? He's a big guy. Okay. So you can make this. What is that cut in half? This, he did a double walled cylinder for an insulated cup, exactly, yeah. Now he's doing a martini cup for Frank. Yes, he made a double walled, oh, now they're talking about the double walled. Look at that, and there are questions about how do you throw it thinner? You squeeze harder, or what? Uh, Which are... You so make I'm pots kind of for a, 20 years. <laughs> I'm kind of a thick thrower and I trim a lot. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing is that, uh, you know, thin, thin pots are overrated. Definitely overrated. I That's think it's a skill. Here. I think it's a skill thing. Like, I want to throw bigger. I want to throw thinner. I want to throw, you know. Um, but I think you need to come up with your own relationship to that. Like, pots are questions. So when you pick up a, a thick pot and you say, ooh, that's too thick, I don't like it, ask why you don't like it. What is it about that thick pot that you, you don't like? You know, I think that's really important because... Um, Otherwise, we can't take these things for granted, and you could actually be missing out on some really cool thicker pots. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I really like to make thick pots. Um, but look at you. That is really skinny and really so thin. This and, is going to uh, really light. stick up a little bit. But here we go. Okay, so, so I'm going to cut this off right here. Oopsie. So that's what I have, and it's floppy and sloppy, and that's cool. What? I don't care. It doesn't matter because what's going to keep it true is this vessel here. So I'm going to put this back on. Yeah. Come on. Sorry. Boom. Thank you. Got it. Love this. Hustling. Love this. Hustling. This is awesome. Hustling. And meanwhile, the plate is just compressed, compressed. The key is compressed to the right of center. Ah. Come on, both hands, elbows right. against your body. So here we go. Center. Ready? Oh, stop it. Oh, stop it. Stop back it. Back it down there a little bit. So they line up quite nice, right? So I just took my calipers and measured, and the yes. clay is soft, so you can literally go boop, 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 and stick it. So now I can just throw them together. You got me, Frank? You Frank, following? next time they're in like, Frank's throwing three times ever in his life, and he's been crushing it. So now I can thin out the rim and make it look more like a cup, and I'll hold it up so you all can see it, and then I'll, I'll cut it in half. I don't know if it'll stand up, but I'll cut it in half so you can see what it looks like. Alright, so I can wow. turn this one out. So this is another technique, two ways to throw double walled vessels. Now the part I'm compressing at the top won't be so double walled, but that's really nice because this will give you a really thin rim that's going to feel really good against your lips, right? So here's the, here's the outside, here's the inside. You can see it's got a kind of a floating floor to it, right? And then I'll chop it in half, I'll show you what it looks like. This is odd, like my mind's blown. Oh, shoot. Is that our filming thing? Yep, that's our filming thing. Oh, okay. shoot. Let me put it back up. How's that film? Here we go, guys. Wait, you got to see this. Let me just put this Sorry. back. Sorry. <laughs> it was too exciting. I know. Let me just open this. Oh, you didn't miss anything. You didn't miss anything. I'm, uh, Hang on. I haven't done it. I haven't turned it around yet. 
It's just a, time for a, a drink. A drink. Okay, let's see if that will hold. All right, ready? Okay. Got... There it is. Oh! Look at that. That's genius of the calipers. So that can be totally sealed off. I'll just put a little and hole somewhere is, in the bottom or something one. like that. And you can actually, uh, I could even put a hole somewhere in here that gets covered with glaze and create a total vacuum. That won't be a problem at all. So oh, the hole doesn't even have to be present. That's it. Yep. Oh my you gosh, kind of that was awesome. Oh. I feel like I need oh. to start saying thank you. Oh. Go into overtime. <laughs> Cheers, thank you so much for coming. This is such That's a treat. Me. It's That's so fun. fun having Ceramics Monthly cover <laughs> artist, guys, Blair Clemo, ABC Potter. You got to check him out. Thanks for watching. This was, was so fun. fun. We that did the double fun. walled. We did the shaped yeah. vase, which is somewhere. And guys, next week, it's my spring break. Um... Oh, I'm either back with a guest that I don't know yet, or I'm taking a break for spring break. I'll keep you posted. But Monday night, 7 p.m., Third of Molly. Cheers. Thank you so much. Cheers, thank you. This was fun. fun. We'll have fun. you back. Yeah. Off okay. the plate. We'll see y'all next time. Thanks for uh, tuning thanks in. Thanks for the questions. That was a fun prompt. That was fun. See ya. That was fun. Bye, guys.